Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Kickin' Bass TV. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the pre-spawn, where bass are moving to this time of year, effective ways to target them, and some of our favorite lures to throw as well. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below, and stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys, so spring is officially here. That means it's time for the pre-spawn. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to target bass and our favorite lures to throw this time of year and sort of just breaking down exactly what the pre-spawn is. So the pre-spawn is basically the time of year where the bass start to move out of their winter holds from that deeper water up towards the shallower water where they will start to feed up and get ready for the spawn. So where are the bass moving to this time of year? Well, for the most part, they're gonna push up into the backs of the bays, into that super shallow water where they can get plenty of light penetration. They can keep their beds on a flat, stable environment, safer from the current, the uh, elements, and the predators of the main water. And they're gonna move back there eventually, but not all at one movement. That migration is gonna happen in waves. So spots like this first turn, or this area in front of the opening of that other cove, that's where you'll find a lot of them hanging out in the early portion of the spring and they will be feeding very aggressively the entire time that they make this move into the shallow water so targeting areas like this point this corner this turn ledges drop-offs anywhere where there's structure cover lines of vegetation where they can stop for a day or two if the temperatures haven't gotten up to their liking to make that final push into the shallow water that's where you'll find them feeding and if you think of these two areas as essentially just a doorway from the main lake up into those shallow waters, then that's a good area of reference to start from when you're trying to get onto a pattern. And to get to these spawning locations, they typically travel a very specific migration pattern that's relative to the original river channel or some sort of ledge or drop-off point so that they can follow that contour, also have a little bit of access to deeper water so that while they monitor weather conditions, if it hasn't quite warmed up enough, that they can hold off on areas like this right here, which is essentially the last pocket of deeper water before you get back into that cove. So if it hasn't warmed up for four or five days in a row for them to make that final push, push up into that spawning area, then you'll find that they will literally sit on a location like this. And remember, they're moving in stages. So if you find that they're not up in the shallow waters yet, move back to those secondary points, those lines of vegetation, cover, structure. That's where they'll hold for a couple of days if it does cool down until it warms up for them to push into that shallow water and get ready to spawn. And if you can find those migration paths, you'll be there for every wave of bass that moves past you to the shallows. And they're feeding up for the spawn, so they're gonna be aggressive. So don't be afraid to throw those faster moving baits and do a little bit of power fishing and they're getting up into that shallow water for the sun as well So I find that 9 to 11 a.m. Is generally where I catch the most fish and then I start to pick up again from around 3 to 6 When it comes to gear in the springtime I generally carry a little bit of everything with me because I move around to so many different lakes But most of them are primarily power fishing baits I've got my lipless cranks my shallow square bills my mid-depth square bills I've got my more erratic moving hunting style eight to 12 15 foot divers some glide baits i've got some jerk baits with me from when i'm fishing the river and i've got my deep diving cranks as well after that for those bass that have pushed up in the shallow water or at least higher in the column i've got my top water baits like my walking baits poppers frogs crickets i've got some chatter baits and buzz baits i've got a variety of different sizes and styles of jigs and then i've got a bunch of different style spinner baits with me all of which are great for shallow water bass in the pre-spawn then I also carry just a little bit of extra terminal tackle with me, extra EWG hooks, Ned rigs, weights, treble hooks to upgrade, crankbaits that I pick up on the road, um, line pegs, bullet weights, spare plastic, swim bait hooks, screw lock hooks, things of that nature. Now when it comes to the baits we use most often for the pre-spawn, if you follow the channel long enough, you know that a red lipless crankbait is one of our go-tos. Now the reason why a lipless crankbait is so effective, regardless of the color that you choose, is because you can work it a number of different ways through the water column, and even if you don't have the greatest clarity in your lake, those fish can seek that out. You can draw a bite in from farther away based on the sound alone. And the reason why we do so well with red as opposed to other colors while a lot of people think it's because bass feed on crawfish, and there is a little bit of truth to that, it's actually more so because of the way that they respond to colors. Their eyes have two cones 
one that responds to green, one that responds to the color red. And because of that, it's easier for them to key in on red, especially in green stained waters like these, where they do exceptionally well and they don't get lost in that murky water as much. Another favorite of mine is a Texas rig craw, and I like to set it up with a little peg eighth ounce bullet weight. And the reason why I have so much success with these is because it's a super versatile bait. Whether it's a dead of winter and I'm crawling that craw across the bottom of the lake, or it's a really hot day in the middle of the summer, or end of the spawn, and maybe I'm working this bait super slow, just hopping it around the vicinity of some bass beds, I can catch bass on this pretty much year round. Today, what we're doing is fishing it through the column because I know I'm in that pre-spawn mode. Those bass are aggressive. And even though the temperature dropped off for a couple of days, like we said, those bass are not gonna move back to super deep water. They might push off a few feet, but for the most part, they're gonna hold there and just tough it out until it warms up again. So what we're doing is we're swimming that crawl around this little bit of timber that's right off the drop off point here. Sure enough, sitting right in between those bits of timber, we got another bass on the kick and crawl. After that, for those bass that have moved up into that super shallow water, a shallow running crankbait is a great producer this time of year. And one of my favorites is this Movement 80X that we got from Sixth Sense. Now, the reason why I do so well with this here is this is a problematic area for us. There's a lot of stuff in this lake, especially in this spot right here, that you can get hung up on. So it's a subsurface bait that you really have to crank to get below one foot depth. So it's great in that respect that it will help me avoid most of those problem areas, but it also has a very similar profile to the bait fish that I know they're feeding on here. And that is all part of picking up on those patterns. So if you see a bait fish and you can match its profile, you're going to increase your success rate. And sure enough, we were able to match the perch that we saw them feeding and pushing up into the corner right by us. And we got another one. Last, any kind of swim bait is great during the pre-spawn because if you can match the hatch, you can really increase your success rate. Since we've already keyed in on a perch pattern here, we know that they've got them pushed up against this corner, not more than 20 feet away from us. We're gonna set this up weedless, which is gonna make it a little more forgiving. Let us run it a little bit deeper in the water column, get it right in that strike zone. And when we pass it through that ball of bait fish, even if they're not feeding on them, when those bait fish scatter because of getting scared away from our bait, they're gonna key in on that flash. And a lot of times that's when one will come in and you get to strike. So sure enough, ran it through that same area where we just caught that last one on the shallow crankbait and the dead ringer produced for us as well. And because we've got those screw lock bait holders on our swim bait hooks and our jigs, we don't have to worry about going through so many soft plastics. We're gonna be able to catch a lot more fish on a single bait without having them rip or tear. And it allows a swim bait like this to rest easier as opposed to getting bound up between the two points of the hook, which let it rest and have a more natural action in the water. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because that's the best way to show your support. And as always, I love to hear from you guys. So leave me a comment in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And if you haven't had a chance, head over to our giveaway video, which we're going to link in the description down below. That's going to get you entered to win one of five awesome prize packages that we're going to be giving away any day. So make sure you get over there. Leave us a comment on that video just saying liked or subscribed or whatever. And that will have you entered to win. Until next time, guys, I'm D with Kicking Bass TV. Subscribe.